Hi, everybody. Does everyone hear me? It's okay. Thank you. So, uh, first a bit of an uh, introduction. So, it's, it won't be a really technical presentation. It's more about uh, giving some feedback uh, about uh, our use and our contributions uh, in, in Linux security, uh, where I work from. So, who am I? I'm, uh, as Elena said, I'm Yves Alexis Perez. I'm French, sorry for the accent. Uh, I'm working at uh, the uh, INSSI, which is uh, in French, uh, Agence Nationale de la Sécurité des Systèmes d'Information. Uh, and I'm a team leader in a, in a lab which is working on hardware and software arch arch architecture. So mostly it's uh, interaction between uh, software and hardware, and especially operating system security, like uh, Linux, obviously, some microkernels. We do a um, mobile and embedded device security. We develop uh, ClipOS, uh, which is a Linux distribution. And I'm also a Debian developer working on the security team and the kernel team and some other stuff. Uh, I'm mostly interested in uh, low-level security and hardening, including, uh, obviously, the, the kernel. Uh, about INSSI, so uh, the INSSI is a French uh, cyber security agency. Uh, a bit of precision, we are not an intelligence agency, so contrary to some other models, we only do, uh, uh, our task is to protect the French government networks and systems. Uh, so we have, uh, in, in the French government has other agencies which do uh, intelligence stuff, uh, and we are only tasked to protect our internal networks. Uh, inside the agency, so it's basically like maybe 500 people. Inside the agency, we have a specific part, which is called the laboratories, which is basically some research part. And we have a, uh, we are the pool of expertise for other, uh, other people in the agency. Uh, and we advise them about cryptography, networking, uh, operating system, everything related to security. We do some research in de and development, uh, some academic publications, and some free software contributions. Uh, French government is a, a large user of uh, free software. Uh, we are not the only ones, but I can I know about uh, this one. So we do a lot of uh, we use a lot of di Linux distributions. Uh, uh, here and there. Uh, we, we also use a lot of um, free software applications, uh, again, uh, on servers and, and workstations. Uh, we are, uh, the French government is also a, a free software contributor and free software pr producer, so we, uh, there are some quite large uh, f um, free software projects which are actually, d actually developed inside the French government. Uh, there was, for example, the, I'm not sure how much it's currently developed, but the SPIP uh, content management system is, is done in a, from a French team, uh, initially. Uh, we have uh, some other agency which maintains a repository, repository list of uh, various free software contribution by, uh, by French administrations. And recently, so in 2016, uh, uh, a law was passed which actually made uh, the data produced by uh, the French government uh, available uh, as open by default, and it includes uh, source code. So basically, uh, by default, uh, code produced by someone in the French administration should be public. Uh, some the, the current situation with Linux specifically. Uh, so we, uh, the French government, has a large uh, Linux usage. Uh, Obviously, we, uh, we run a lot of servers on Linux uh, in, from various distributions, uh, com community or commercial. Uh, we, have also, we also use uh, Linux-based appliances, uh, like for firewalls, uh, IDS, VPN, etc. And here and there are some Linux workstations. Uh, and INSSI is tasked to secure, well, it's responsible to, to protect uh, various French networks, but we can't do everything. We are 500. Uh, so uh, we try to uh, delegate a lot, so we try to basically uh, produce documentation, recommendations uh, for by various IT systems, uh, and we try to actually secure stuff uh, the more upstream possible, so it ends up uh, being used uh, for various administration, whether it's the Ministry of Defense or the um, 
uh, education or culture, whatever. Uh, so we try to secure, to, to provide some uh, recommendations and contribute where we, can, where we can, and we try to organize contribution when, uh, where it's possible. So let's take, talk a bit about past and current uh, the contribution. So we produce actually a lot of documentation. So we, we try to, uh, to provide uh, insights to various users, administrators, and, and developers. Uh, so I'm sorry, the, the documentation is for now mostly in French. Um, but we do some Linux distribution hardening guides. Uh, so recommendation and um, how to, on how to secure a uh, secure distribution in once in, it's installed and it's oriented towards uh, system administrators as well as uh, produ products developers, for example, for our appliances. Uh, we are currently working on a Linux kernel hardening guide in French, which is, which is basically, uh, which uh, tries to take various recommend existing recommendations like the KSPP recommendation and stuff like that and turn it in, into something usable by French uh, system administrators. We also have uh, some specific uh, documentation like uh, um, stuff for produ products de developers and uh, for example, I'm, I will come to back to that uh, just a bit later, uh, some security arch architectures for Clipper's form and some documentation which this time is in English about uh, the security, uh, security architecture of um, ClipOS 5. Every link is uh, in the slides, so you will be able to, to reach them. A bit of what, uh, about uh, ClipOS. So it's, um, it's a Linux distribution, uh, which is developed uh, internally uh, inside the agency since about uh, 2005. Uh, it's based on Gen 2 Ardent, and it's it was intended as a, an internal uh, distribu dis distribution for the French government. Uh, so it has some specific um, uh, usage uh, restrictions. Uh, it's, uh, uh, well, it's supposed to be under, under, under like, um, uh, for office work. It's um, not a develop, developer box or something. And so it includes a specific kernel hardening and it, it should, it's supposed to be used uh, as a multi-level uh, operating system. And we recently uh, released it, uh, well, released the, the, the specific bits as, a, as free software, uh, so as a beginning of, uh, of, sept of sept September. So we have some, some feedback uh, about uh, using a hardened, a hardened system inside, uh, inside the agency and, and elsewhere. Uh, so, as I already said, it's, um, so it's running inside the, uh, the administration for, for 10, 10 years and it's used by non-technical users, so basically it's for office work. Uh, and actually, we didn't have that much uh, user complaints. Uh, the first one usually being really that it's not Windows and so there is no Microsoft Office or Outlook or stuff like that. So it's, Obviously, it's, uh, it, it's a problem if you used to that, but we didn't have that much feedback, at least not negative p feedback on hardening and security measure, uh, even though it's actually quite, um, uh, it's not really permissive. For example, uh, there is a strict uh, write uh, or execute policy, so for those not familiar, uh, there is no place on the system when you can add, uh, at the same time, have write permissions and executable permissions. So whether on the file system or in memory, if you are able to write somewhere, you can't execute stuff there. So basically, it's to, to restrict um, an attacker. So an attacker which would be able to execute code by exploiting a vulnerability wouldn't be able to then import it uh, around tools. Uh, that's something that technical users are missing, obviously, for example, um, the um, dual security level is interesting for uh, administrators, so they have one, one environment, uh, it's a, a full of environment which is connected to the, for the standard network and a, an isolated environment uh, which is connected to the administration network. Uh, that's something uh, administrators really like to script stuff and it's not really possible on, on clip. So they are missing uh, that. But besides that, we don't have a lot of negative feedback. For developers, it was a bit harder because uh, 
uh, ClipOS is actually a complete, a complex beast. Uh, it started in 2005, and it wasn't really intended to be uh, shared. Uh, so the development was mostly internal. Uh, we tried to share it with some some people, but uh, uh, it's, it's it was on a, on a isolated network, which has some issues when you try to. Uh, uh, synchronize with, uh, with upstream, do the standard distribution maintenance, uh, and the toolchain and SDK was a bit complex. So we had some issues, and we ha we got some some feedback for that for the following uh, for what happens next. And uh, what happens next is, is that we recently started uh, building a new version, which is the version 5, uh, which has <coughs> basically the same uh, basic and same specifications as uh, ClipOS 4. So it's uh, internet for uh, managed, uh, managed networks. So it's not something which will be uh, useful for um, uh, and hand user trying to just secure themselves. It's, it's internet to work inside a, a managed networks. Uh, it will be hardened, uh, it is uh, hardened Linux distributions, internet for uh, non-technical users, uh, and we'll try to make it work for administrators too, and still have the multi-level security uh, I've, I've talked about. Uh, but we have some different choices. So, for example, we try to do open development from the start. So, the, the current development is already public, and, and we'll try to upstream relevant code directly because we have. When you don't upstream code, usually you end up being late, and the porting, the front forward porting is hard to do, uh, especially for the Linux kernel, which moves really fast. And we like to ch share a bit more with the community. And uh, we have a modular design and tooling in order to facilitate forks and deri in derivative. So we intend to uh, do some stuff ourselves, but we know uh, that some people might want to uh, do some derivatives, and we'd like, to, we'd like it to be easy so people can uh, contribute back uh, easily. Uh, and if they fork some, some stuff, say, uh, that the synchronization with us and with us team is, 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 will, will be easier, we, uh, we will try. And basically, it's, uh, it's intended to be a state-of-the-art implementation of INSSI recommendations. So I mentioned the documentation uh, earlier. There are some things we are, uh, as a French uh, defense authority for, uh, for computer uh, systems, uh, we have the possibility to impose stuff, uh, to force uh, administrations to respect some recommendations, and uh, this should be uh, something which is compliant to the, this recommendation. So a bit of word about uh, ClipOS 5 kernel. So um, it, it has uh, some objectives, some security objectives, and um, the first one being to provide isolation primitives to user space. Uh, so I mentioned it's a multi-level uh, uh, multi -level system where you have a um, complete environment which are isolated. Uh, the ClipOS 5 kernel should provide that. It should maintain some trust in hardware resources because it's mostly intended for a workstation, even though it, it will be useful for our servers too. And uh, a workstation needs to have hardware access for stuff like network card, for um, graphic card, but also USB, talk, USB keys and stuff like that. So you have to maintain some trust and be, uh, be able to select which, which environment gets the, the, the hardware token. And obviously guarantee some kernel self-protection because if it provides some useful primitives to user, user space, it has to protect itself. Uh, so we're mostly uh, doing some mainline hardening. We rely on stuff provided by mainline, for example, the KSPP recommendations, which are also to minimize the attack surface by just basically stripping uh, everything which is not useful. Uh, and we try to err on the security side rather than performances. So we have some possibility, uh, since we are not a generic distribution, uh, to make same secure choice by default, uh, even though it might have some usability or performance uh, uh, drawbacks. Uh, we do rely on some out of tree kernel patches. We try to limit them, uh, but we still uh, rely a bit, a bit on some, some of them, uh, which are 
somehow well known. Uh, for example, we uh, rely on Linux Ordon, which is somehow um, an instantiation of uh, last public GR security and PAX patches, but with a lot of evolution. We try to include some, some bits. Uh, we, uh, we rely on Lockdown but, uh, patch series, which uh, is intended to um, uh, separate kernel access from super user access. So it's not because you have uh, uh, UID zero that you should be able to do whatever you want with uh, the kernel. So more uh, strict isolation between user, user space and kernel space. And we also include the, the stack leak series. And the idea is, also is to improve uh, kernel hardening security inside ClipOS 5, but also to provide some kind of test bed for the hardening features which are considered for upstream. And for example, uh, try to provide real life feedback and maybe help inclusion into mainline. We also try to, in the long term, uh, minimize uh, differences with mainline to facilitate synchronization. Um, some current past and current contribution, uh, which are initiated by the, uh, the agency too. Uh, there is Landlock, for example. So it's a, a patch by uh, Michael Sana, which is working in my in my team, uh, and it's, uh, it's it has been it has been presented in Linux Security Summit North America. Uh, the submission process is ongoing, and what Landlock tries to achieve is uh, basically unprivileged sandboxing. So it's enabling application developers to provide a, secu a security policy, uh, which it's a bit like SecCom BPF, but it's not restricted to Cisco. Rather, it tries to provide a, a meaningful access control for every, every kernel object. Uh, and it's implemented as a, as a LS Linux security module. Uh, and I'm going, well, the process is ongoing, and we hope it will be ready and included at, at some point. Uh, that's all for now on the current contribution, but we have some more involvement plan. Uh, one interesting thing which comes from ClipOS 4 uh, and will be integrated in ClipOS 5 is a, a new flag for open system call, uh, which is OMAIEXEC. Uh, it's basically uh, a way to enforce and extend the WXORX policy for scripts. So right now, uh, if you try to, if you have a non-executable um, moon points, uh, you can still execute script from, from there because an interpreter will just read the scripts. Uh, and so actually, uh, it's possible to extend uh, some, uh, to, to support no exec from uh, for scripts, but it requires uh, some interpreter patching. So we propose um, some, some new flag to open, which would be set by uh, interpreters, and the, the kernel could then decide to uh, restrict uh, the system call. So we already have OMAIEXEC in ClipOS 4, so the patch are already available on, on when we started to publish uh, ClipOS 4, and we'll try to uh, upstream that bit. Uh, it's definitely not, uh, in, it, can, it can't be integrated right now because it's really uh, static uh, and we need to do some re-architecturing. Uh, we, we are looking into some options like, for example, we try to replace the art code policy by, uh, with a, just a system one runtime configuration. So for example, a CCTL. Uh, maybe uh, and pro provide a way to, um, for Linux security modules like SA Linux to provide more fine-grained policies. So maybe uh, support um, uh, a, 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 local poli a local policy depending on from where the, the, the script lie or relies, etc. Uh, so in terms of timeline, we hope to have a first, uh, we, ha we have currently an internal draft and we hope to provide a first RFC uh, by the end of the year. And we'll integrate into ClipOS 5, I mean, while so we have a real real life feedback of the new architecture. Something else we are interested in uh, is vServer. So for those who don't know about, uh, about it, uh, it's a patch available since quite a long time uh, for containers. Uh, so before there was uh, LXEs and Docker and stuff like that, and even before namespaces and C groups, uh, there was some, uh, the vServer patch. Uh, which has, which basically provide from in the kernel uh, a unified container infrastructures. Uh, 
uh, like, for example, pair container identifier, uh, capabilities and flags, network capabilities and flags. So it's a large ex external patch, and uh, I don't think there are any Linux substreaming plans. It provides a lot of different features, but actually uh, not all of them might be useful, especially uh, right now that we have uh, already containers based on namespaces and, uh, and C groups. But some bits might be useful, and we are toying with uh, the idea to do that, uh, for example, as an LSM. And what is, what is interesting is using uh, the container ID, so X, uh, XID in, uh, in vServer, uh, which can then be used to provide control, uh, access control decisions. So basically, right now, the kernel doesn't know uh, about containers. It, kn it knows about uh, uh, namespaces and C groups, but there is no such thing as uh, a, a, a container. And while it might be useful in some cases to not tie, well, containers are something known for user, user, user space, uh, but having the concept in kernel might be interesting too. We don't have a specific timeline and plan, so we'll see how it, uh, how it happens. And we'll, I guess, use Clip OS 5 as a, again as a, as a test bed. So as a conclusion, uh, as I said, French government is a large user and contributor of, of free software. Uh, but for the kernel part, we started to contribute and contribute more only recently. Uh, so I'm Definitely interested by some feedback on is our work useful, uh, is it enough, uh, and a bit of uh, a question on what what can we do next? Uh, are there some specific items which would be interesting? And uh, more generally, in which direction uh, the French government on the security side could help? So, if you have any question, maybe I'll start. Uh, so, your vServer uh, notion flies directly in the face of the container community's uh, kind of uh, flagship claim, which is that it's not containers aren't a kernel construct. Um, how do you see dealing with that? Honestly, we we don't know. Uh, I mean. Uh, we are aware that uh, it's, uh, it, it's been proposed here and there and uh, usually uh, rejected. Uh, but uh, again, we don't know exactly how we'll present things. It's uh, something we, we are toying with. Uh, we know it's useful in our use case and having, uh, maybe having it as a, um, integrated with some LSM concepts might be actually uh, actually useful. So we don't have uh, um, we don't have code obviously, but we don't no, we don't have a, a complete architecture a specification either. It's something we are currently toying, but we will try to draft something and and propose it to the to the community. community. Okay, um, and the only other thing is this kind of. Uh, interesting notion here is that what the <clears throat> one way you could do vServer is would be if you used Smack and SE Linux at the same time uh, with Smack providing what you're looking for from vServer and then SE Linux running the way it currently is so that you know, I kind of appreciate the fact that you've actually presented a plausible use case for that so thank you Don't I didn't I have to talk <laughs> so I'm going to apologize up front to you. This isn't so much directed at you, but more as to Casey. So other than trying to promote your stacking initiative, what was the point of that last question? Like, I don't understand how that would even work. Of course you don't. <laughs> Maybe we will take this discussion to lunch, so. <laughs> Thank you so much for um, bringing up OMA exec. Um, that sounds like exactly where I would like to see things going. Um, and um, I assume that you're not going to limit only to Python, but to be, have the enforcement in user space in other um, script interpreters. Um, where have you posted any patches on um, for Python yet? 
So we, we, right now, we, we didn't submit any patches uh, to upstream, whether in, uh, to Linux kernel or the uh, interpreters, but in the, in the source code we published for ClipOS 4, there is uh, the current patch for, uh, for the Linux kernel, so the link is in the references. Uh, I don't think the link for uh, interpreters is present, so it might be a bit uh, uh, hidden in the source code because we published a lot of things in various projects. But uh, as far as I remember, we, we have patched, uh, patches for uh, Perl, Python, Bash, well, not Bash because it's, uh, we don't use Bash, it's uh, BusyBox, but there's a BusyBox shell uh, and maybe some others. Uh, but it's, there is no uh, single place to look at for now. Uh, I I can try to, to dig uh, to dig them, but it's uh, the, the, the patches for interpreter are, right now are really simple because it's just about passing the home may exec flag at the right place. Uh, for example, for Python, it's uh, when you open the, the you open the script directly, or you open modules and or stuff like that. Um, that's it. So, is it enforcing when you open a file that that file can only be executed? Um, as opposed to later, in other words, the interpreter knows whether or not it's opening data for data and it's knowing whether or not it's opening data for being executed. Is the inter are your patches enforcing that distinction with the may exec? Well, we, we actually, um, the interpreter patches, well, the, we rely on you know, interpreters, so we have to trust that, is, uh, that they are doing the right thing. Uh, and the, the patches uh, are tune the, the, the various open system calls, so they use omayexec when they are act, uh, actually exec, uh, opening a file for execution. So uh, we we know because the interpreter knows when what it can do with uh, with a file uh, because it's a, it's a it's a script or because it's a, a module or, or something, and we don't do that, for example, because when the Python opens something else. So it's really uh, something which needs to be uh, tightly integrated in the interpreter. You might want to consider um, enabling this and, and in terms of policy, um, I'd be interested in using this for um, IMA to be able to validate the signatures on what's getting opened. Yep. Uh, well, actually, I, I did not manage to mention that, but we have also in, in ClipOS 4 some patches uh, to actually tagged uh, executables and well, a lot of stuff which has been done differently in the kernel, but we, we never sub submitted it uh, at, uh, at that time, so it's duplicate work, but anyway. Um, how do you handle the problem of uh, mixing code and data? Like, uh, for example, if there is a LibreOffice um, file with macros, um, <laughs> it's a bit difficult from a conceptual point of view, right? Yes, uh, we, we don't. I, I mean, uh, it, we, we know we won't have a perfect coverage uh, because uh, basically uh, anything can be done, can, can be um, turned to, into some code executions, but we have some uh, longing fruits. So obviously, uh, scripts, um, standard scripts. Uh, we we have some way to in, in ClipOS 5 and 4 uh, to restrict, for example, uh, extensions in Firefox and Thunderbird and stuff like that. So we we consider uh, those the programs we can be done. We can which can use some data and execute things from, from there. Uh, but we know we, we won't be able to do everything. For example, uh, uh, we know PDF can be used to execute code. Uh, Java, JavaScript, obviously, it, we, we can't really prevent execution. So what we are really interested, actually, is a way to, to prevent, uh, to, to enforce WXRX policy for things which can do system calls, basically. If you can't do system calls, we, it's, a, it's, a bit, uh, it's a bit easier. Thank you. I think we have to thank the speaker now. <laughs>